Brexit was a real problem for us. It was the straw that broke the camel's back. And the reason it was the problem was because our response to it was so utterly tone deaf. We didn't understand what people were trying to tell us. We skipped straight to the legal and technical parts of the question. We then went back to people and we had members of our shadow cabinet saying if you'd voted to leave, you were either stupid, too stupid to understand the question, or you were a racist. Who said that? Um, so there was a moment after the election when Diane Abbott went out and said that this was about xenophobia and racism, pure and simple. And I had that conversation with Diane at the time because I was serving in the shadow cabinet. This is 52% of this country. But then we had other people. We had half the shadow cabinet over here arguing for Remain and saying they were picking a side and they were picking Remain. We had another half of the shadow cabinet over there saying they were picking Leave and they were arguing for Leave. Between them, they managed to insult the entirety of this country where Remainers were caricatured as liberal elitists and Leavers were caricatured as stupid racists. I know that we have the best intentions to try and bring together those who voted Leave and those who voted Remain. But unfortunately, we focused a lot on what was happening within Westminster and didn't convey what we were trying to do to our communities. And that led to a lack of trust. It led many people in my constituency, for example, to think that we were trying to overturn the result of the referendum. And if you were strongly pro-EU, you felt that we weren't taking a strong enough position. And it took so many other things down with it. So in that election, when we should have been talking about jobs, aspiration, industry, what the future would look like, we weren't, we were talking about Brexit and trying to justify our position, which was confusing anyway. I went to 44 constituencies in the general election with different campaign teams across the whole of the United Kingdom um, and in particular in leave areas. And every team was talking about the same thing. What's coming up on the door? What are the big issues? And there was complete uniformity across the country. It was number one, the leadership. Fairly or unfairly, rightly or wrongly, anybody who was in that campaign knows that was the number one thing that came up. I'm not saying it's right, I'm just saying let's be honest about it. The second thing was Brexit, of course. And, and it, but that came up differently. If you're campaigning in the Midlands, it came up in a particular way. If you're campaigning in Scotland, it came up in a completely different way. But it did come up, I accept that. And I'll come back to it initially because of that. The third thing that came up, and this is not me, this is the teams reporting to me in my own experience, was the manifesto overload. Now, whether what was in the manifesto was right or wrong, there was too much. There was a tipping point, and it didn't matter whether it was good or bad, because people didn't believe we could deliver it. All of us, and this is myself included, have to recognise that we have now left the EU, and therefore the Leave Remain argument is gone. Uh, and we need to focus on the next challenge and what Johnson does but, with the but negotiations. The... But we won't go into the next election as a Brexit election. So be honest about the analysis for this one, but look... Let's look at the 2024 situation in terms of how we rebuild the party.